tonight, I believe it's worth repeating. I believe it would be all right if we'd all just stand and give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a hand clap. Amen? Let's give Him a hand clap. While you're standing, if you got your Bibles, let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. When you're there, say amen. Praise the Lord. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain, lame, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter, John, about to go into the temple, asked alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But my favorite part, Such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And a few days later, his feet and ankle bones received strength. No, the Bible I read says immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, one more time, God, for this opportunity. God, thank you for your grace. God, thank you for your mercy, God, your long-suffering, God. Thank you for everything that you've done already for us this morning, God, and in the song service tonight, God. Lord, now I ask you for the next few moments, God, to anoint us to hear what thus saith the Lord. God, I ask you to anoint me, God, only to say, God, what you'd have me to say, God. Not just to get up here and talk about you, God, but to speak what thus saith the Lord. God, when we leave here tonight, God, we'll leave challenged, God, we'll leave changed, and we'll leave encouraged. God, and we give you all the glory and the honor. And everybody said, Amen. You might be seated. Tonight I want to talk to you for just a few moments. Such as I have, give I thee. Now first off, you have to have something in order to give it. Amen? If I'm going to hand you a $50 bill, I better have a $50 bill before I go to saying, here's your $50 bill. You know, I think about Peter and John. What would have happened if Peter would have said, I'm going to give you what I have, but he didn't have nothing. That lame man would still be sitting at that gate called Beautiful Lame. But you see, Peter had been in the upper room. Peter had just come and gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter had just, he just stood up and he preached the, the sermon of Pentecost. You know, just a few days prior, he denied Christ, right? And here we see him now, he's standing up and he's saying, you know, these men aren't drunk. These men are filled with the Holy Ghost. And so we see that he had been in the river. He had been with God and he had something to give. He didn't just walk up and say, here, I'm going to give you something and not have it. He said, you know what? I've been in the upper room and I was headed to prayer, but you know what? I'm going to give you what I have. And what I have, I give to you. Get up and walk in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I love reading the Word. I love expounding on the Word. And I love the details. And immediately His feet. That's just like God, amen? He doesn't do it halfway. He doesn't do it a quarter of the way. Immediately, the man's ankle bones were healed. You see, it's like Stephen said this morning, if we really knew who we were in Christ, if we really, if we just had a small glimpse of who we are in Christ, the demons would flee every time we woke up and our feet hit the floor. It was not because of us, but it's because of the blood that's been applied on our life. It's because the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of us. That's why the demons tremble. That's why the devil has to run when you say the name of Jesus. But I don't, I don't think we really understand. We can't grasp how much, how much of God we really are because of Christ. We're joint heirs with Him. He's got it. I've got it. I belong to Him. He's mine and I'm His. You see, this is what I want the church to get. Know who we are in Christ. Get so on fire for God that we will shake the foundations of this place with our praise. I don't know about you. 
I love worship. I love it. I love to sing worship. I love to do it at the house. I love to do it at church. I love to do it at work, wherever I'm at. But I don't want to just sing just to sing. Whenever I sing, I want it to bring glory. I want it to bring honor to my Father. And I don't want to just come in here on a Sunday night, sing two or three songs and get a little goosebumps. I want us to come and I want us to, for a few moments, I want us to lay aside everything. Lay aside that the football game's going on tonight. Lay aside that Bonanza's coming on again. Record it. They've got it on DVD. You can watch all the seasons on DVD. Lay aside everything for just a few moments and let's get lost in God. Let's get excited about being in the presence of God. Bear with me. You go to a football game. How many of you know they sit here just like this? The Tennessee Volunteers score, you think they do this? Woo! When they can't score, they're still up hollering, Woo! Go Big Orange! We ain't even going to get started on Kentucky. <laughs> but when we come into the house of God, that's how we do. And I'm not trying to be mean or ugly, so don't take it this way. But we come in here, we'll raise our hands, we'll sing a few songs, and we'll move on. Let the preacher preach. We'll have an altar call and we'll go home. No, let's come to the house of God expecting Him to move again. Let's come expecting God to do the impossibility in our lives. How many of you in here got something that you can't control? There's something going on. You need the master's hand to step in and to do the impossibility. Now, why don't we act like it? Why don't we throw our hands up and say, God, I can't do it without you. God, I've got to have you. Give me strength, God. You move on behalf for me. I would love, this has happened before back home. I'd love for it to happen here. There's a time that a fire department got called to a church there in Panama City. They come in, knocked on the door. Yes, can we help you? Well, we've had a report that the top of your church was on fire. Said the place was burning to the ground. The pastor said, no, there's no, there's no fire like that. Said the Holy Ghost and fires in the building. We're having a Holy Ghost showdown. That's what we're having. They said, well, since they called us, our duty, we have to go in. So they had to go up to the attic and look, no smoke, no nothing. Not the first stitch of smoke. But somebody saw the church on fire. What happened to our churches today when men and women would see the church on fire again? Not literally burning, but it was on fire. The Holy Ghost is there. What happened to when a man's going to cheat on his wife, drives by and sees an old white church? And all of a sudden, the conviction gets a hold of him so strong. He turns around and he goes home. He said, honey, I was going to commit adultery on you, but I drove by an old church. I drove by that little white church and the Holy Ghost began to move on me. The Holy Ghost convicted me and said, you get home to your wife. Can you imagine coming up the parkway, seeing this church on fire with the Holy Ghost, the whole side of the mountain on fire? I really believe that it could happen, but do we really want it? God isn't punishing us, but I will say this. He's not just going to pour His Spirit out on anything. If you don't want God, He's not going to pour it out on you. But if you want God, I, prom I promise you, if you want more of God, He's here tonight and it's ready. He's got the oil. All He's looking for is vessels, just like in the Bible. There's plenty of oil. They, the oil was coming. The oil was coming. to finally they run out of vessels. The oil stopped. Fill us up again, oh God. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. I'm ready for the move of God. There's so many things that keep us from the house of God. We, we say, well, you know, pastor can do it. So many times we leave it all for pastor to do it. We'll say, well, he's prayed up before he gets there. He's not going to just show up half cocked. All I've got to do is just go to church, show up, and church will be good like it's always been. I'll tell you this, you're doing an injustice to this body. You come to this church not prayed up, not ready, you're doing an injustice to your pastor and to your church body. We're the body, we need to come together and act as a body. When one part of the body's sick, what happens? The whole body takes notice. Your right arm's hurting, the whole body realizes it. You take the big toe off of my left foot, I can't walk anymore. That big toe is what keeps me straight, keeps me from falling over. You take my big toe off, I'm not walking on that foot anymore. 
We need every part of the body working as it should. Stop leaving it to pastor and the leadership of the church. Quit expecting them to do it. Every time the doors are open, be at church. Come on, be at church. Where else in the world would you rather be? There's no other place than being in the house of God. I mean, I've been to football games. I've been to monster truck rallies. I've been to different things. But there's nothing like being in the presence of God. There's nothing like being under the anointing of God. I tell you this, if we'll all get one mind and one accord, then we will get the mind of Christ. God will come and He'll meet with us and He'll move on our behalf like never before. You see in the book of Acts, they were walking in the Spirit here. They were on their way to prayer. Now how many knows they just come from the upper room? I mean, I hear people say, oh, you go to church three times a week? Isn't that a little excessive? Are you for real? You don't go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night. They just come out of a prayer meeting filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what they're doing? They're going back to pray again. Going to pray again. This is what I mean. If we will get this determination in our heart that no matter what, I'm going to pray. I don't have to come to the church to pray every day. But I can pray at my house. I can pray in my car on the way to work. I can pray at work. But when the doors are open, I'm here and I'm going to pray. This is why I encourage prayer meetings so much. If you're not coming to prayer meeting, please, by all means, this year make it an effort to start. I've seen it at prayer meeting. I've seen people healed in the prayer meeting. Pastor never even take the pulpit. People are getting healed. People are getting filled. People are falling out in the Spirit. And the service just go on and on and on and on. You know why? Because people come together, one mind, one accord. Expecting God to move. If we all come expecting a move from God, then we wouldn't be discouraged. You see, they weren't at church. They were on their way to pray. You, most, you know, most of us, we wait until we get to the house of God. Then we try to walk in the Spirit. or Then we try to work the Spirit up. I'm telling you, it's never going to happen. It does not work that way. What would happen if Peter and John would have done this? If they weren't prepared, if they hadn't been to the river and got what they needed from God, what would have happened? We'd have a lame man still. He wouldn't have been able to get up and run around praising God for what God had done for him. The man was healed because two men were walking in the Spirit and God was able to use them. They were able to say, such as I have, I give to thee. Now, when we get God, don't hold on to Him. Don't get God and then just bundle Him up. No, get God and give Him out. Just give Him to everybody you come in contact with. Then that means, you know what happens? Then you've got to go back and pray again. You've got to get filled again. And then you're going to put some more out to somebody else. And then you're going to run back to the altar. Oh, God, Lord, I give and I give. But, Lord, I need to be refilled. You know what? Then the oil doesn't get old. Because it's constantly new. Constantly moving. If God wanted to use you and I like that, would we be available? Or would He have to look somewhere else? You see, we're, we should be like the water hose that's not clogged up, but rather wide open and ready to be used at any time. We must make sure that there's nothing damming up on the inside to stop the Holy Spirit. We are spiritual conduits for the Holy Ghost. He wants to use us. He desires to use us. The Holy Spirit is like the water running through the hose. Are we willing and unclogged? I mean, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter told the man, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. You see, he was given the Spirit of God to the man. The man was healed and went around praising God. You see, God don't just fill you for just talking in tongues. He fills you to and builds you to give you boldness, to give you strength, to witness to somebody else, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. And then they go out and say, oh, let me tell you what God done. Did you hear what God done for me? Oh, let me tell you what God did for me. He healed me. I had lower back pains. But tonight I'm running around jumping free because He healed me. I mean, we don't mind to get on the phone and call somebody and gossip. We need to be filled. It's vital to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The more of God you get in, the less gossip you have. I know that you may say, well, I am filled. I got filled and that's it. That's as far as it goes. I beg to differ. It's just the beginning. 
It's just the beginning. It's so much more than tongues. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. It allows you to be bold. It allows you to be brave in Christ to witness to the person at the grocery store. Being filled gives you the boldness to stand square toed and flat foot in the devil's face and tell him to hit the road. Rebuke him. He has to flee. You were called to be world changers. What I mean is that is someone that's reaching the ones you're called to reach. Now, not everybody can be a missionary. I'm, I'm not complaining that I'm not. I'm glad he is and I'm not. I can just send money and say go. I get to stay on America's soil. And I'm thankful for that. But you see, we need to be filled with the Spirit then who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to look back, listen to me just for a moment, and say, hey, I introduced that person to Christ. Anybody ever heard of the preacher, um, Billy Graham, I think? Anybody ever heard of that man? Somebody talked to him about Jesus. Somebody's in heaven tonight getting jewels in their crown because they talked to him about Jesus, and millions come to Christ through his ministry. That individual that talked to Billy Graham, me and you had never reached him. But they did. You never know who you're going to be talking to. You know, he didn't just wake up and say, hey, I need Jesus today. No, someone spoke to him. You see, being filled with the Holy Ghost will give you an awesome power. Acts 1.8 says it like this. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. I remember when I was in school. My buddies would say, hey man, won't you, won't you come out with us tonight? Won't you go do this? Won't you come to our party? Won't you do this? And I remember, no, I ain't going to do it. Finally, they stopped asking me. But I remember what held me. Is when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I remember how hard and how long I prayed and sought God to be filled. And I remember there would be times that, that I wasn't perfect by no means. But there would be times I'd start to do something that Holy Ghost would just check me. And it was just like I could just look back and see the nights, night after night, laying on that altar travailing before God. Oh, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hour after hour after hour. And I would look and I'd say, is this 25 minutes of fun and pleasure worth losing all of that? And so that's what kept me through high school and the latter parts of high school. I tell them, no, I said, I've worked too hard to get where I am with Christ and I'm not going back. I mean, I for months and months on end, I prayed. I wept and I begged God, please fill me, please fill me, please fill me. Finally, I got filled. Thank you, Jesus. What a glorious time. But it didn't stop there. I got a tongue. I got a language of tongues. But I also got a boldness in Christ. I was able to stand. I was able to tell people about Him. Go ahead, give Him a hand clap. He's worthy. You see, that tells us, this is what that verse tells me, that we're responsible to go and to reach the lost. We're not just to sit around and wait on them to come through the doors. It's not happening, people. We're called to be witnesses for Christ. Has Jesus done anything for you? Is there anything that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if Jesus wasn't there, you would be over? You'd be finished? Think about it. The next time you're worshiping, when we're singing the great I am, we're just standing here. He's the great I am. There's some people in this church when they worship, I love it. That's one thing about standing here and I try not to look at you because I'm lost in my own world, but I see people back there and you can just see the tears coming down their face. Oh, she fought cancer. Oh, he fought this or she fought that. They've come through this. They fought hell. Their, their marriages was on the rocks. Maybe they've lost children. Maybe this has taken place. Maybe he lost his job. You can see the tears and you can see them though worshiping. Every now and then you'll see a saint of God back there getting excited. You see, they may not can jump too high, but they're jumping with everything on the inside of them. Tell them about it. We need to tell the world about Christ. I think about this many times. I've been thinking about it for a long time. The cure to cancer. If I had the cure to cancer, say this was the cure to cancer. 
I say, well, sorry, people. You've got cancer. I'm going to hang on to the cure. You would look at me like I was a terrible human being, right? But we do the same thing because we got the cure to cancer. We got the cure to broken homes. We got the cure to back pains. We got the cure to whatever you're facing. And all we do is most of the time put it on a shelf and wait till Wednesday night and we come back and we'll read a little bit. Then we'll go back on the shelf till Sunday. Then we'll pick it back up. My God, we got to quit holding on to the cure. We got to let go of the cure. I'm going to give it to you and then I hope and pray that you're going to give it to somebody else and it's just going to go and reach across the world. You see, you reach people I'll never reach, and I'll reach people you'll never reach. But the main goal is to bring them to the saving power and knowledge of Christ. I'm not out here saying, oh, I'm trying to see if I can't beat Brother Daryl, how many people I can get saved. No, I hope and pray he wins hundreds of thousands. We're all in this together. We possess the greatest power and the greatest authority known to the world. There's no other authority as great as God. There's nothing more, no one greater than God or the precious Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will give you boldness for every situation. Quit leaving Him in the car. I remember I used to tell the youth, now when you leave here and you go out and you're with that boy or that girl, don't you dare, don't you dare walk out of the house and tell the Holy Ghost, stay here. I'll be back in a little while. I'm going to hang out with my girlfriend and out of my boyfriend. It applies to us too. We can't just say, oh, stay here. I'm going to work today, Holy Ghost. You sit right here and be a good boy. It ain't going to work like that. You need to say, oh, I'm fixing to go out to the mailbox. I'm fixing to go get the mail. Holy Ghost, walk with me. Holy Ghost, go with me. Wherever I'm going, whatever I'm doing, Holy Ghost, go before me. Acts chapter 5, verse 27, 29. When they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. I love this part. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Church, what if that happened today with us? I mean, I, I was watching a documentary of this place overseas. They're not allowed to have church. But I was watching the documentary and you could see they were underground and the first 15 minutes they're bawling and crying and just worshiping God, having a good time. Four hours later, they're still bawling. They're still having a good time. Now, you heard me, four hours. I'm watching it, I'm watching it, and I just skipped through, just trying to see how long. And after I got to about hour 12, they're still weeping. They're still crying because they don't have the liberty to worship God freely. They have to go underground and do it. But we have been given so much freedom, but yet we don't give anything back to God. There's nobody standing outside of that door waiting on you to lift your hands to shoot you and kill you or to put you in jail. But those people are. They could go to jail at any moment or lose their life. And they're underground hiding out, wailing before God, praising Him and thanking Him for His goodness. Peter and the apostles answered said, We ought to obey God rather than man. These men were imprisoned and yet they still had the courage of God to stand up against the high priest and the Sadducees. They are going up against people that could have them thrown in jail for a very long time. But you see, it didn't matter because they had the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's just like in the Scripture, Peter says, such as I had. They had the Holy Ghost on the inside, so they're able to stand. They're able to look the devil right in the eye and say, it doesn't matter what you tell me. I'm still going to preach the gospel. I'm still going on in Jesus' name. You see, he knew he wasn't operating in his own agenda, but operating in the will of God. This is where we could take a learning point from Peter. We need to walk in the Holy Spirit. Stop walking in ourselves. Let me say that again. We need to walk in the Holy Spirit. Stop walking in ourselves. We are no match for the devil. However, 
with the blood applied on our lives and the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside of us for more than conquerors. Amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 37, 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Stop doing it on your own and walk in God. Such as I have, I give to you tonight. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm thankful that He filled me. I'm glad He called me. I'm glad that He chose me. If He filled me, He'll fill you. Maybe some of you are filled and it's been a while. I ask you tonight, ask God to refill you. God wants to refill you. That's His desire. He wants His children prepared for war. You see, you will never see this nation send its troops overseas without first seeing what they're made of. They will know before they leave boot camp if they're cut out to be a soldier, if not. They have properly trained them for such a time as this. And if our military, the United States of America, thinks that it's that important to do, how much greater does our Heavenly Father think? Do you think He's just going to, you get saved and He's going to throw you out there to kill you? Not on your life. He cares for you and I. He wants to make sure that we're properly trained. We're ready for battle. He'll never just send us out there to die. He will always prepare us for the battle or for the trial that is on the horizon. He is a good Father. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So whatever you're coming up against, just remember God's equipped you for it. It's right here. Anything you need, send the Word of God. You are more than ready. Just stay prayed up and do have, be ready to do battle. I mean, read the Word. Study the Word so that you'll know what to do when the time comes. You see, it's just like the football team. They all have a playbook that they use, right? They study it hours and hours and hours and hours because they want to be the best team. So they study it all over the weekend, throughout the week, and they're waiting, they're preparing, they're studying for one game. They do it one game at a time. They're not looking ahead six or eight games, they're focused on the next game. So they study and they study and they practice, practice, practice for that game on Friday night. They do all the work and study for just 60 minutes. I can't imagine the hours that they put in for just a 60 minute game. Average Christian prays less than two minutes a week. I remember when I played sports, I played soccer. We had to be up one morning on the soccer field running at 6.30 on a Saturday morning. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I said, Coach, couldn't we come in at 8 o'clock? He said, well, since you opened your mouth, he said, y'all get to run another, uh, another like five suicide laps. Yeah, 6.30 in the morning and you're exhausted and you don't want to do nothing. But they prepare all week and we pray less than two minutes a week on average. You see, they do all that for a Friday night feel good. It's all just temporal. It's, it's never going to last. How much greater does the kingdom of God mean to you and I? We have the complete set of plays that we need. We have the training that we need. God has equipped us. We have the Word of God. It's more than enough. It is our playbook of life. You got any problems? Go to the Word of God and see what it says about it. Quit picking up the phone and calling sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. And let me tell you what that pastor said. He's picking on me. That pastor said... Something along the lines that I'm, I'm only praying two minutes a week. I tell you what, what am I going to do about that? So then he calls and then he gets her upset and her gets him upset. Go to the Bible. Ask God, Lord, I, I'm sorry I give you two minutes and try to do better. Try to give him five minutes a day. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm guilty. I've done it myself. Brother Clendenin used to say, I know the, the heart of a man. Give me his wallet or pocketbook. I can tell you what he loves. Where's his money going to? 
That was Brother Glendon and not me, by the way. I just repeated it. You see, it's our playbook. Any problem in our life, all we got to do is go to the Word of God. There's nothing that you will ever face that the Bible hasn't already dealt with. The Bible is our road map. If we get lost, it's because we didn't stay true to the Word of God. The Bible changes not. It's the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If we get lost, it's because we walked away. It's not His fault. It's our fault. Follow the directions and you won't get lost. How many of you ever put something together and took the instructions and just tossed them? And I see most of the women looking at their husbands. I've done it. And there'd be, like, there'd be times I say, hey, Wendy, what? So I need those instructions back. Oh, I kept them. They're right here. Here you go. You missed step three, four, five, and six. I, knew, I saw you, but I just, I was going to let you figure it out. <laughs> Follow directions and you won't get lost. Stop thinking we're so good and we don't need the map. How many of us have ever been on a trip? Us men especially too good to ask for directions. Oh, I know where I'm at. I've traveled this road all my life. Just sit back, honey. Be quiet. Let me show you how to get where we're going. An hour later, we show up. We're right back where we started. At the same store where we started an hour ago. We need to lose our pride and say, Can you please help me? I have no idea where I'm at. I'm as lost as a termite in a yo-yo. I know we can't make it. I know I can't make it without God leading and guiding my steps. Lastly, I want to talk to you about the stoning of Stephen. If there was ever a man that had the Holy Ghost. There was ever a man that went through something outside of Christ and done what Stephen done. That man was filled. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 54 through 60. When they'd heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. How many of you have ever had some other adult just come up and bite you? And you just said, oh, bless his little heart. Now, by the time they're going to bite you, you're going to come across with the hook. They gnashed, their t they gnashed him with the teeth. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see he the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran up upon Him with one accord. And they cast Him out of the city and they stoned Him. And the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down, cried with a loud voice. Listen to me. Lord, though they've killed me, though they've beat me, though they've stoned me, though they've bitten me, though they've spit upon me, though they've done all of these things, he cried out the Lord, a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Tell me he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. The human man cannot withstand that kind of torment, that kind of beating, that kind of biting, that kind of uh, mocking and doing without being filled and able to say, God, do not charge them. Lord, don't, don't lay this sin to their charge. That man who was filled with the Holy Ghost. I tell you, Stephen had heard of what Peter had said in our text, such as I have. He knew about what it meant to have something to give. And so he had mercy and he had grace and he had compassion on those people. Even in all of this beating, false accusations, Stephen still kept his eyes on the final prize. He wasn't worried about what they said against him. He just wanted to walk right in the eyes of God. Think about it for a moment. Would you have been able to take all of this and still keep your heart pure before God? You know how he did it? He was filled. He had the Holy Ghost and power. And through all of it, He said, Lord, lay not this into their charge. 
Once he said it, he fell asleep. Church, here it is, the first month of the year, January. It's about over, but we're still in the first month. I pray that if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, I pray that tonight, seek it. It's a gift. He, just, he wants to fill you. He wants to give it to you. He wants the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. He wants you to be filled with Him. Don't be afraid. Don't fear it. Just accept the gift that God wants to give you. Maybe you've been filled and it's been a long time for you. You haven't prayed in tongues in several years. Well, tonight's the night for you as well. Just because you've, you've been down a while, haven't prayed in tongues in a while, doesn't mean you're not saved. I feel like honestly a lot of people that once were filled, and maybe it's been a little while, they don't want to come up and ask somebody to pray for them again because they backslid. They didn't backslide. Tonight's the night. You are saved. You just need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Let's give it all to God. Let's lose everything of our own. Give it all to God for everything. The big things and the small things. I'm asking you tonight. If you would, let's stand. Let's bow our heads. I don't, want, I don't want nobody looking around. I just want you to have your eyes on God. Close your eyes and look at God. Think about God. Maybe you're here tonight.